Hey, this is Digital Byte Computing. Today we're going to be talking about how to virtualize a physical computer or a physical server. We're going to be using VMware, so let's talk about that right now. So my name is Emilia and I work in the IT industry and I absolutely love it. And today we're looking at how to virtualize uh, using a, a tool which is done by VMware called P2V. Essentially it's a physical to, vir to virtual converter uh, that converts a computer, a uh, physical server, physical computer into a virtual machine uh, within VMware. Uh, so you may, you may have a PC that has got a whole heap of data, it's got your operating system, it's got software, it's working really, really well. And the last thing you want to do is go and build a brand new one in a virtual environment. You could have a server that is fully configured, it's working well, it's on the network, it's doing its service, but you don't want to build a new one. So what you can do is you can use software by VMware to virtualize these physical servers so they become essentially identical clones but now in a virtual environment and they're imported into a virtual VMware environment. So what we're going to do is we're just going to jump onto my computer, we're going to go and download the software that you need and then go through the process and the steps on virtualizing one of these physical machines. All right, so we are logged into our PC. Uh, this is a Windows 10 computer and this is the actual computer that we are going to be virtualizing. So this is running Windows 10. Uh, I'm connected into a laptop uh, that is running Windows 10. So a physical computer that is going to be virtualized and then added into VMware. So the first thing that we want to be aware of is that you need this computer to be uh, able to access the ESXi host or the vCenter environment. So right here, uh, I'm actually logged in to my ESXi host, which you can see right here, nice and easy. Uh, and actually, I can actually access everything. So really, once I've virtualized this computer, it will then show up in the list here as a virtual machine. I can go and I can add more resources to it, add more RAM, CPU, hard drive space, change the network configuration, do all of that sort of stuff because it's now in a virtual environment. And it's really identical to my physical computer, just virtual now, which is actually really, really good. Now, what you can also do is you don't have to go and install the P2V software on the computer itself that you're going to virtualize. Uh, you can install it on another computer and then do it remotely, but we're gonna to touch on that in a little while. What we're gonna first do is open up your browser. Uh, this is on the computer that I'm using it or on another computer. And we're gonna look for VM, download VMware P2V. So the application is called vCenter Converter. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on that, making sure that it's being downloaded from the vmware.com website. You're gonna ensure that it is the correct version and it's actually provided by the actual vendor, which is VMware. On the very far right, I've got download now. So you do need to have a My VMware account to be able to log in and then download the software. So if you don't have one, go ahead and register. It is completely free. You can sign up now, log in, and then you're good to go. And as I said, it's completely free. So now that we've logged in, you're presented with the download page. We're going to be downloading vCenter Converter Standalone 6.2. So select Go to Downloads. And now just download that exe file it's 171 meg so it's not too big except the uh, end user license agreement okay if you well of course if you only choose to accept it uh, and then it'll start to download and it'll take a little bit of time depending on the speed of your internet so let's check back once this is downloaded so once that is finished uh, i've just got it downloaded into my downloads folder vmware converter we're just going to double click on it and install it We're gonna say next and next. Agree to the terms and conditions. Uh, select uh, the location you wanna install it. I'm just leaving it as the default. And I'm doing a local installation, so I'm gonna install it locally onto this computer. You can also install it uh, in a client server installation if you want to, but we're not gonna go through that right now. Uh, I'm not going to join this just because I don't wanna be doing that right now. And install. Install is completed and we're just gonna say run converter standalone client now. It's also got it on your desktop there, so you can open it up from there if you need to. So it does give you a little bit of a spiel around uh, what it does, what VMware converter standalone does, lets you convert a virtual machine. The other great thing is it lets you do 
a Hyper-V conversion. So this is Microsoft's Hyper-V, which is a competitor to VMware by Microsoft. So it actually does let you convert Hyper-V virtual machines into VMware virtual machines if you so choose to. We're gonna now select Convert Machine. Now, as I mentioned before, we are going to be converting this local machine. So there is a couple of options here. This local machine or remote Windows machine, you can also do a Linux, but you don't have to install the, uh, the software onto the computer that you're gonna be converting. You can also install it onto a different computer and then just point to the physical machine that you're going to be converting. Add the IP address or the fully qualified name and then administrator credentials to be able to point and log in to that computer itself. That is sometimes easier if you're not able to say install the agent onto the physical machine. In my case, I've installed it locally, so I'm gonna leave this as this machine. And then I'll select next. It's now asking me for the destination. So at the top it says source is this machine or your remote machine if it's somewhere else. Uh, the destination is VMware infrastructure virtual machine or a VMware workstation or other VMware virtual machine. So you can convert it into other forms of VMware uh, VMs. We will stick with VMware infrastructure virtual machine. The next part here is to add the VMware infrastructure server details. So you can add the uh, ESXi host IP address or the fully qualified name, or you can actually connect it directly to a vCenter environment. So either of the two will work. In my case, I'm gonna connect it directly into my ESXi host. So input the details of the server and then put in the username and the password. So the server being the IP address or the fully qualified name, so ideally root credentials for username and password. Once you click on next, it's gonna to try to establish a connection into that host or vCenter. All right, so that is connected. If you haven't gotten to this point, it's because your computer that you're trying to virtualize uh, cannot actually get access into the uh, VMware environment. So you may have some permissions issues. You could have an issue on the firewall. There could be a routing subnet problem. You need to ensure that the physical computer can see the uh, ESXi host or the vCenter host on the network. Or if you're doing it from a remote computer, that that remote computer can see the ESXi host and the vCenter as well as a physical machine that will be virtualizing. In my case, it's connected and it's found, it's already displaying the, uh, the VMs that are already on here which match up with the VMs that are on here, which is great. You now have the opportunity to give the VM a particular name. So I'm gonna leave it to the exact same names. Uh, of course, once you virtualize it, you can go and change the name later on to something that's more meaningful. It's gonna ask me what data store do I wanna put it onto? I've got two data stores, so I'm gonna put it onto my prod NAS data store and what the virtual machine version will be. Obviously, you will select the version that is relevant to the version that you are running of ESXi. Um, if you do want to be able to run an earlier version of ESXi uh, with this VM, then you install a version that is relevant for that. But I'm gonna be running the latest because all of my ESXi hosts are all in the same version number. So essentially it's gonna convert everything into this configuration right here, including the, uh, the disk size, the virtual CPUs, the memory. You can go and edit some of this stuff right now. So right now, if I don't wanna give it seven gig of memory, so you can actually allocate this to lower or higher RAM. You can do this now or you can do this later. We're gonna leave everything as the default right now and then perhaps play with it later on if you really need to. Here's a summary of the whole lot. And now we select finish. So now the process has begun. You'll see that it is uh, running. It's in a running state. Uh, so it is actually currently now converting the source, which is this local machine, to the destination, which is my ESXi host, if you have not gotten to this point, uh, there's potentially something wrong with your configuration somewhere. Go back, double check everything, make sure that your firewall connectivity is correct, that the proper permission security is all okay. Gives me a status of approximately, it's gonna take one hour, three minutes to do the conversion and the current status bar to let me know where it's at. Obviously, the larger the virtual machine, the longer it will take. Uh, the more complex the virtual machine, the longer it will take to actually get converted. So we're gonna let this do its thing. So let's leave that and check back once it's complete. So if everything has worked correctly, the status should now say complete. It'll give you a start and an end time. So it did take roughly just under two hours to do. You'll see that it did back up this local machine into this destination, which is my ESXi host. So 
that is done from that perspective. If you have any errors, you have to go back and try it again, relook at this video, and uh, we'll have to do some further troubleshooting. So we can now log in back into our ESXi host, and the VM should now show up in here. So this is now my Lenovo-Win10 uh, virtual machine. You'll see that it does say Windows 10. So this is the, essentially it's an exact replica of now my physical machine. So it has worked. Now what I can do right here is I can actually go and uh, change some settings. I can go into the actions area, uh, click on edit settings and I can add more resources, add more RAM, more CPU. I can add more hard drive space if I want to. And then really all I can do right here is just power it on. And if everything works, um, I can open up my console window to see what's going on. And that's a very good sign. So the fact that I'm seeing my Windows logo showing up right here says to me that uh, it's not crashed. It's not blue screening. It's not uh, having any errors. So it has converted it correctly. Some other things that I'd recommend is uh, sometimes it's good to start up this new machine with no network card enabled so that you can ensure that there's no conf conflicts. And then once you're sure that it's all okay, you then go and shut down your physical box and then go and power this one back on. You log in as normal. And that's really the basic process on how to P2V a server. Should all be good from here. So that is it. Uh, we can definitely cover a lot more, but hopefully that gave you a bit of an overview on how to convert a uh, physical computer or a server into a virtual uh, VM in VMware. Very, very cool, uh, very, very helpful, and it saves you a lot of time uh, without having to rebuild a computer or a server in a virtual environment. But that is it for now. I would love it if you commented below. Let me know your thoughts as well. And subscribe to Digital Byte Computing and click on the notification bell to be up to date as I release new videos. But that's it for now. Thanks for watching again. We'll see you next time.